and you're only, you know, your many years of beautiful harmonic training is reduced to eight bars, and that's quite. <laughs> you can look at it as a sad thing, or you can look at it as a happy thing. You only have eight bars, but also these eight bars slash they only count fifteen marks. But those eight bars and fifteen marks can really go super wrong. Well, they can do super well. And you know, after three years of harmony training, or maybe some of you have more, you really want it to go well. So I'm just going to put up an example of a class paper, and we're going to go through the harmonic progression. And then we're going to do interesting things. Of course, at your level, you now know how to add non portal notes. You know your progressions, you know your credentials, you know your decorations, and you're going to know how to choose chords now. So, Oh, wait. Maybe I should do it here. Starting here. Oh, you're back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, this might take a while for me to write. Shops. Yes. D major. Great. So it's D major. I don't know if they'll give you a minor key. They may or may not. Not much difference between them, by the way, when you're writing it out like this. But okay, so this is D major. We have our D dotty dotty thing there. Um, and I like repeating that D dotty dotty there. It's just more clear, okay, that we are in the same key. Because right, sometimes things modulate, you're, you're not modulating here, so just make sure that they can see you're not modulating in the lines, okay. Then, now we're going to look at the soprano line. <laughs> and right in the beginning, what catches my eye, what are we looking for firstly with our progression? We're maybe looking for common tones or the three, two, ones, one, two, threes, eight, seven, eight, something like that. But can you see what's happening here? There's like an eight, seven, six, five thing going on there. So what does that tell you? What does that look like to you? If we're in D major, it's going D, C sharp, B, A. Then I'm not singing properly, but okay. What does that look like? A passing six, four. Like it's... It's more, a passing 6 4 would rather be 8 7 8, but this is a tricky one and it's weird. I've never seen this one come up before, but they really wanted to challenge the matrix of this year. When was this? Oh. Yes, so that's um, the falling uh, or descending 
major scale, you have your 876, and then you have no option. Like, we're not even going to map out little nice chords here because we, we don't have much of an option. You actually do, you can make your life hard by doing other things, but you can you make your life easier using progressions that you know. So, you know the tonic, median, subdominant progression. Then you already have your first three chords mapped out for yourself. Isn't that? Beautiful <laughs> to know that it is very, yeah, fulfilling. Yeah, from here onwards, we're going to try and map out some chords for the, for the other notes. If we see progressions that we know, we're already just going to choose those chords because we like to put in progressions that give you extra marks for progressions, or rather, they take away marks if they see you haven't used your passing 6 4 or your credential. Something like that. They'll take away marks for that. Just because they're like, eh, hey, you should know this it makes your sound better. It makes your harmonies work better. So if we're going on to that A, we should always map, and yes, I'm good with you can do it anyway. I'm just gonna map out the chords here in C, F, in D major. You can also write the tonics, the tonic, depending on what you like. I mean, yeah. You probably have your own style by now. So we have that. Um, this is D, F sharp, A. And we have um, E, G, B. We have the F sharp, A, C, F sharp. We have G, B, D. A and you only want the dominant seven. A, C, sharp, E, G, because you know how to work with the dominant seven. And then we have a B, D, F sharp, and C sharp, and E, G. Okay, so if we're going on to that A, which is the fourth note now, our options, I'm just going to write them above. Our options are tonic. Super tonic and dominant. Okay, we'll come back to choose what we like. Okay, great. Then we're going on to G. We have some nice options. Okay. Let's see. We have dominant seven. We have super tonic. I'm just going to put some of the options here. We have sub dominant and sub medium. Okay. Then for the B. We have supertonic, uh, subdominant, and submediate. Here again, some repetition samples. And then we have chord one, we have chord, or tonic chord, we have dominant and median, but I don't think we want to end this progression. So we don't want to end cadence on median. So I think we're going to be tonic and dominant. So I'm just going to put that here. Then we have, here we have some options, I don't even know where to put these options, just going to put them here. We have tonic and we have submediates, fine. With the G, we're just going to copy what we had in G before, okay, we had those options, not going to seven, super tonic. Uh, Subdominant and median. All of these scribbles. Okay. I don't know why I wrote it there, but that's what G <sighs> Okay, then we just gonna copy what we had there. We had tonic, supertonic, and dominant. Um then for G, we're just gonna copy what we had here. Subdominant, dominant seven, supertonic, and medium. Great, we have two more chords to go. We have an option here tonic, medium, submedium, and then, oh, yes, we forgot to. <laughs> of course, we're going to end the piece with tonic, and then the last, second last chord, what do we want that to be? What do we want that to be? Dominant. Great. And also, now that you are metric level, 
that the thing that strengthens that it makes it the dominant chord even more tense is that seven. So we want to make it dominant seven now. So more often than not, and I would say please, please, please make use of your dominant seven because you know how to use it if you taught as well. And I promise you in your theory paper, especially with the WCED papers, they're not going to give you another chance to make use of your beautiful dominant seven knowledge. Use it there, use it at your second class for always. Do that. So now we have our chord group, we have some nice, we have a definite chord progression in the beginning. We know what we're going to use. We know what we're going to use at the end for definite. Just some of the others are a bit fuzzy. So now we're going to choose according to, you know, we're going to choose according to our harmonic progression page. And this is, yeah, this is really going to save you guys a lot. So we have tonic, median, subdominant. The next one, we have an option to go to the tonic chord. We have an option to go to the supertonic, and we have an option to go to dominant. What sounds better? If you're following it, if you're going to go from subdominant, and subdominant can only really go to a few places. Subdominant can go to dominant, or it can go to tonic. So we literally only have two options now. So would we go to dominant or tonic? They have choices here. This is where <laughs> choices pan out really nicely, or they don't. I would say I would go to the tonic because it's, you know, easy, easy enough, and tonic can go anyway. Because I'm also thinking a little bit ahead. I know that the dominant chord can't always go somewhere. So if I'm choosing dominant here, I have to go home, I have to go to the tonic according to the harmonic progression rules. But I don't see the next chord, there's no option for tonic. So that kind of, you know, scrapes the dominant thing here. So I can't do dominant and I can't do super tonic. So the tonic is my only option. Great. Um, the inversions you can sort out afterwards. Maybe you want to put the tonic first inversion, that's great. But you're going to do that once you are, once you're busy filling in chords. This is not just your chord options, not really like your, your structured inversions just yet. Okay, great. So we have tonic. We're going to the next chord. Tonic can go anyway, so you don't really have <laughs> you don't have much worries. You can either go to dominant seven, super tonic, subdominant, or median, submedian. However, I also try and look again. I think that right at the end we're gonna. <laughs> We're going to have to end up with a dominant. Just because, you know, I think that's what they want. Usually, the first, the, the first phrase will always end in dominant, and your second phrase is going to end in tonic. That's a given. That's what they're going to test you on. So you can really already memorize that. Right. So preceding that, if you just look a little bit back, but backwards, we can't really have the submedian here. So we can only have subdominant or supertonic. And I think a nice approach chord to the dominant is the supertonic. So here I'm just working backwards. I'm going to put supertonic there. And before that, in this chord, I think we don't want to repeat supertonic because uh, we said we don't repeat chords after each other. And yes, I think this is going to work better. The subdominant. The subdominant here. Because you have subdominant, which goes to its relative function of supertonic, which is perfectly acceptable. Some people might, if you don't know harmonic rules, it might look weird. You're like, can I go from subdominant to supertonic? But the answer is yes, and you have that right here. You're going from the main chord, subdominant, to its nice functions. Almost like in this case, the supertonic is strengthening the subdominant, or the supertonic is an extension of. The subdominant. So if you look at it that way, it makes sense. So then we have our chords for our first phrase, which is great. So when we, when we start harmonizing, we'll start thinking about inversions if and when we may choose to do so. However, let's go on. Uh, if we're starting, so that phrase is ended. Nice. <laughs> great. So next phrase, we have an option here to, to 
start the new phrase on tonic or submedian. And because it's a new phrase and it's it's not the beginning of the piece, we can use both, but uh, I would feel safe to start in the new phrase with tonic again, do you agree? Yeah, it just makes more sense because tonic can go anywhere. If you're choosing submedian, you only have a few options. So we'll make that a tonic four. Great. Then we have an option of going to cool. We have an option of going to super tonic, subdominant, dominant seven, or leading note. Now, leading note is a very specific thing. We only use it as a replacement for the for the dominant six four in passing progression, and that's not what happened. What's happening here? So we're already going to embrace that. Yeah. So we don't want that. And what I'm seeing is. Or we don't really want dominant seven. We don't want the dominant seven so early on because it's so intense. We only want the dominant seven at the end. So dominant seven is scrapped. And then we only really have supertonic and subdominant left. And from what I'm seeing in the next chord, I would rather choose subdominant in this chord. Then from subdominant. We have an option in the next chord to go to tonic, supertonic, or dominant. What's easy enough to go to there? Would you go back to the tonic? I think I'd go back to the tonic because simple enough, we can put in versions afterwards. Tonic. These are options, people. <laughs> you can always do something else. As you see, you have many options, and some of them can be right. I mean, you definitely can go from subdominant to dominant. Nice interrupted cadence in the middle of nowhere. Ah, nice imperfect cadence, sorry, in the middle of nowhere. But I'm just making a choice, and then I have to live with my choices that I'm making here. Um, but there are options. It's not like in mathematics where there is specific answers, specific. This is more. It's more open, which actually makes it more difficult. But I'm going to make my choice of the tonic there. Then from tonic, we have options to go to the next one. We have super tonic, subdominant, dominant seventh, and leading note. And of course, we don't want dominant seventh there because it's too strong, it's too intense, and we're not there yet. <laughs> we're not at any yet. So we have subdominant and super tonic. And I feel like I've used the subdominant here. I've gone tonic, subdominant, tonic. I'm not going to go subdominant again. So here I'll go to super tonic. Just because I can. <laughs> you don't have to, you can, you can do subdominant there. There's no problem. Then I'm going to, ah, I see something nice there. Great. So we have dominant seven. Okay, we have dominant seven. What can strengthen the yes? If I'm looking at the end, I have my last chord, I have my dominant seven. Here I have an approach chord, which is an approach chord to the dominant seven. What can come between an approach chord and the first chord of cadence? Sort of to strengthen that dominant seven, or to decorate it rather. What usually happen? What can happen at a cadence? Credentials six four five six. I don't know if that fits. Yeah, I think your your credential six four does fit here. So I would decorate your you're decorating your dominant now because your approach chord is here. So you're not going to have approach approach dominant. You're going to have approach decoration dominant. So decoration chord. Beautiful, you can have your tonic 6-4. You have your tonic 6 four chord here. And then that's basically it. Then we can start harmonizing. Here comes the here comes the difficult part. But also what I'm noticing is you can squeeze, especially because they're not gonna ask you credentials or passing progressions anywhere else. If you see the opportunity to squeeze it in. Do show off your knowledge. Um, I can see there in the first phrase, um, 
There's also always like years, years of cadence. There's a supersonic to dominant that can be an imperfect cadence. However, you can also push in a decoration chord there. You can force in inverted commas a credential here on the beat, and that's beautiful because, as we know, credential six fours are only on the beats, you know, the strong beat. So here, acceptable. Here on the beat, also acceptable. So I'm going to just decorate here with the credential. I'm going to do our normal dominant, not a dominant seven. So there's a place where we squeeze it in. Um, if you want to be very extra, right at the end, you can also force in another credential, another progression, uh, another decoration with your subdominant, with your subdominant six four going to your tonic. <laughs> And then you're very, you're very boss. You're on your way to get <laughs> very, yeah, very good marks. So um, I don't that good to you. Was that a scary process? Of, oh, it's different from what you normally do. What do you guys normally do? I just go through and guess, and then once I start putting in the things, then it changes. Mm. I feel like everyone else also feel that way. I do the I write out the chords like you do, like mm. tonic. That I do that on the side, yeah. and then I. But I and I did you choose as you go, chord for chord. Yeah. I feel like it's very stressful to do it that way, just because there's always a you don't know where you're going. It's almost like you you're walking up one step, but you can't. You don't even know the staircase has been fully <laughs> finished. <laughs> and then one when you get like somewhere, and you're like, oh wow, they didn't finish building this thing, and then you fall. So this, I know it's coming late. I mean, I know you have Madrid finals like right around the corner. So I don't really want to force something new, but this is mind blowing. Like this is amazing. This changes the way you want me. I wish that you had, you know, access to this earlier. I wish I had access to it earlier. But it's never too late. You can use this and you can be brilliant. You can in your shop, everyone feel beautiful harmony bar. <laughs> so great. Once we do that, we can decide if we're going to put things in inversions, but we'll come across, we'll come to that now. Um, let's just harmonize already from the start. We have um, tonic, median, subdominant, and that's an easy progression in terms of you know that you double the root in all three chords. Um, word of wisdom push your tenor voice as high as you can. This is going to help you to avoid voice crossing because I've seen, I just did the, this progression with the grade 11. So it was the first time I'd seen it. And the thing that they immediately did was they, you know, they put their tenor voice very low. And then when they had to get, they, they did the progression well, but it was like when they had to resolve the progression, they were like Shandy said, those weird chords that you find outside of the progression, when they had to move on. They found themselves voice crossing and the tenor was singing lower than the bass and all this nonsense. Just try it, especially in this progression, just push the tenor voice as high as you can. So if I'm doubling the root in my D tonic chord, I will have a D in the bass. I already have another D. You can, you know, do that whole thing when you write your chords out. Uh, D, F sharp, A. This is on your rough work, and then you double your D. So I have two Ds now, an F sharp and an A. I'll put my A here. So that my tenor can be really high, and my tenor will be singing F sharp with A. Great. <laughs> and then we just move on. Uh, yeah, we're just going to double the root anyway. So we have an F sharp. Uh, we're going to keep the, the F sharp here. We have our C sharp, and we just need A. You just follow your progression rules. You have two common tones, and it's just the bass in the soprano that it moves. That's easy enough. Uh, then you have your sub uh, subdominant. Still part of this progression. Okay. Uh, nice. And just because you followed the progression rules, you'll know that you don't have any weird octaves or parallels. Um, I don't want you to put in some non chord tones, and I'm spotting a nice place for a non chord tone here. I usually did this as an afterthought, you know, randomly see where I can put in the uh, what is it, lower auxiliary or 
a passing note. I see a passing note possibility here. There's an F sharp and there's a D. I think we can actually pass with a nice E here. And we can make that a quaver. Yay! <laughs> so then you have some, they do, they do allocate marks for passing notes or non chord notes. There's your opportunity. Just make use of it. Exploit it, milk it, do whatever you need to. So we're going to the next chord. And, uh, Ooh, I didn't even see this before, guys. <laughs> so exciting. Are oh, you see this? Uh, can you see these three nodes? And can you see the chords that are underneath? We have subdominant, we have tonic in the middle, and it's on a weak beat. And then we have subdominant. Something that we haven't put in before. We have our credentials, we have a nice tonic, medium, subdominant. What if we not put in our fancy knowledge? What if we not put in yet? In terms of like six four chords. Passing six four. Great, we haven't been in a passing six four. And I'm seeing a nice opportunity here. Oh, it's beautiful. Then you only have to work, then you know there's no like <laughs> Sorry. I get excited about this is so nice, but it actually works out. Um <laughs> you have tonic sub medium, tonic medium sub dominant, and then already you don't have to think about weird chords because that's almost like you treat it almost like a playful cadence. Yeah, no, sorry, you're treating it like a passing six four. Sorry, I'm speaking nonsense. And then this is already in root position, so we'll make this one in first. Great. Let me just write this better. Great. So then you already have some other in, inverted chords made possible for you. And this is easy, you know your, your rules of the passing six four, one voice goes up, step wise, one voice goes down, step wise. You have a common note, and then you have one voice that goes, you know, up, down, up. Yeah, step wise. So we're just going to put that in. Okay. Yeah, that's right. A, yeah, B. Oh, this voice stays the same. D, D, D. And then this voice goes down, so you'll have that. That voice goes that up, down, up thing. Yay! And no plan not ready to have to check it because we just followed our rules. You always check afterwards if you already know OCD. <laughs> and I mean that in a playful way, not a serious way. So you can always just check it afterwards. But I don't really need to check it because we followed our rules. So there shouldn't be any problem. Great, and then from there, we just have our super tonic, and then we're gonna push in a nice decoration called there. Uh, let's see. Super tonic is an E. <laughs> so our super tonic, if you can give it in root, we're gonna have to hop from a B to an E, and it's, it's okay, but I would rather hop a little bit red. So I'll put the super tonic in. First inversion, then we're only hopping to a G. Okay, and then what do we have? Mm. And it gives chance for our piano voice to still sing nice and high with an E. Okay, great. And I'm seeing, what am I seeing? Oh, you can be easily and also that put another passing note here. The G and the alto is going to an E. You can always put an F sharp there if you want to throw in your non chord notes. Great, so we have that, and you can check for parallels. So our chord in subdominant, G, B, D. Our G's are here, and our E's are separated also because we didn't put them. Yeah, so that's fine. E, G. Uh, G, B, D, E, G, B, yeah, we don't have any, any parallels, that's great. Moving on, uh, moving on, we're going to our uh, credential. So, yeah, we have, we just, let's just do the dominant chord, for instance, we have our dominant here. Okay, and our dominant chord would be with an E, there, and a C, E sharp. 
So that's our dominant. Uh, if we're going to use the credential there, what would change? These guys would come afterwards. Um, what we have to missing that would be. We have our common notes already because they're in for the form of a minimum. So do we know which notes are missing? If we have our tonic six four, we need two A's and we have two A's already because we're doubling the the first. And then we need D and F sharp. Yeah, we need D and F sharp. So and if we're Doing it according to stop, stepping stepwise, and then we put our D here, and we put our F sharp there. Great, so we've harmonized very beautifully. Okay, let me just see for any parallels between the supertonic and the credential. We have EGB, EGB, and and e, 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 e. Oh, okay, I see. If you're going to force in that credential and you don't want to change that, that code, you're going to have parallel. So <laughs> let's not be fancy. You're only going to force in one credential at the end. So let's leave it as fast. This is when, when you choose not to complicate your life. <laughs> Because sometimes being fancy, you can complicate your life more. So we're not going to be fancy. We're just going to be normal. Yeah. So you see, you can run into a bit of trouble like that. But you can also work your way out of it. So we're taking the potential away. It's a lot of trial and error here. But you've already, you've already finished the first phrase. Great. Let's go on to the second phrase. So we're starting on... We're going to start on a tonic. So we have a oh wait. We have a D. Oh okay, I see. I would say we had the option of starting on the sub median. And because we ended just on the dominant there, let us start here on the sub median. And then we can we can work our way almost like an intro. From the dominant to here, we have a very high bass note. We have B in the bass, and we're going to have a D there. We have an F sharp, we just need another D. Yes. And it works well. As you can see, you're doubling the third here. You're treating it almost as a Interrupted cadence, like they say. And then your, your C sharp does rise to your tonic in your tenor voice, that's great. Okay, from here we're just gonna go to call subdominant. Okay. That's easy enough. Then we're gonna go to the tonic, but I don't think we have that more. Sorry, guys, we're going to be done soon. We don't have um, a lot of inversion, so I'm thinking I'm just going to put this inverse inversion. If that's okay. Then also move nice and set wise in the base. We don't want the base to be jumping around too much. Okay, great. And then we have set wise movement and common tone. Uh, then we have our, yeah, I'll put this in first inversion as well, just so that we can have some nice steady bass movement for those G here. Okay, and then we have our potential 6-4 going on there. And you can keep your A a minute. Oh, what nice it sounds, bum. And then we bum, bum, bum. Okay, I'm just going to put an octave, just so that there's some interest. 
You don't have to do that, but I'm just going to do that. I'm going to play the other voices. This one is the same. Mm. Yeah, this one's also. And then we have our potential at the end. So we have a D and that one. I think just the last two notes, the potential of our dominant six four, which two notes are we missing? We have our, we have our first in the base and it's double, we have our two Bs already, we're missing G and B. Uh, where would we put those? Where would I put my G and where would I put my B? G and the tenor, B and the also. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> And then that's that. That's a very fancy, fanciful organization. And then you can look for places to put in your, your non chord tones. If you, ah, there's a, if you see common tones, for instance, you have a D and a D, maybe you can put in an upper auxiliary. You can make it D, E, D, something like that. Or you can make it a lower auxiliary. You can do something interesting just because you need part, you need parts of the notes or you need non chord notes. Okay, so that's that. A lot has been said. Um, let me just get this. This my hands are super chalky now. Uh, so that's that. I'm going to send you, I'm going to scan in now <laughs> the memo to this what they look for and it's it's very detailed in terms of they mark per chord progression like between the two chords and then they mark seeing if you use the potential if, they, if you found a place for passing progression uh how you move doesn't make sense you're not going from you're not going from super tonic to tonic or something you're not doing something weird like that you're just going um you're going according to your nice little page. Okay, and that's a lot to be said for only eight bars. And it's a lot to be said for only 15 marks. If you want to paper for one subject, but uh, that's, yeah, it, that's what goes into harmony. But hopefully this has been easier. You see, we didn't even have to look for parallels a lot just because we followed our rules. Uh -huh.